Hello everyone, this is Aegon of Astora, and welcome back to Dark Souls 2 Let's Talk Lore. This is episode 12, and we've just arrived at uh, the Iron Keep, which is a very, very interesting, desolate, and run-down place. As you can see, uh, and I will talk about this again in a later episode, but the architecture here is rather familiar, or rather similar to that of the uh, architecture that we briefly saw in Heights Tower of Flame, where we will return later on. Uh, but just something interesting to note for now. Yeah. Lots of Sun Bros engaging in jolly cooperation, which is a good thing. We're going to aggro just this one Alon Knight, which you can do by running up against the wall there. Uh, I'm not going to try and parry any of these guys because, as I mentioned in the last episode, uh, I don't want this playthrough to be to become Aegon of Astora tries to parry things and fails horribly at doing so. And the Alon Knights, for one reason or another, have very difficult to predict attacks um, and such that they are very difficult to parry. So we're going to avoid aggroing any of those guys for now and say hello to Magarold. What? Who are you? Who, me? I'm Magarold. Who else? What? Have a look at my wares. I'm mainly a treasure hunter, you see. Many a merchant on the side. A room about, looking for a find, following me instincts. I don't care what things worth. What matters is whether it grabs me. Do I enjoy what I do? Well, that's a good question. I suppose I must. I, I've been doing it for ages. Again, Curse is forgetting. Uh, he hesitated before saying, before describing whether he enjoys what it is that he does. Uh, presumably trying to think back to uh, a time when he did anything else. Although I will say it's interesting that he notes that he's mostly a treasure hunter when, uh, as far as we're concerned, he never leaves this spot. There's good iron in these parts. An old king even used it to build a castle. But the thing was too heavy, and it slowly sank into the ground. Fire spouted from the earth, and, and the place turned into this. At least, that's what I'm told. Not a bad story, eh? So, what'll it be? Anything for you today? Not a bad story indeed. I think that's about all, it, all for his dialogue, let's see if he has anything else. Hey! You know that old fella with the Hulk and blue sword? He talks really oily of it, but I got a feeling it's a fake. I didn't want to disappoint him, so I just sort of talked around it. Let me just say, there are lots of legendary swords out there. <laughs> Speaking, of course, of Benhart, who uh, we do not summon in this area, we don't see him in this area, but it makes sense that he would have been here, seeing as later in the game we encounter him in Dragonlet Castle, uh, at the Throne of Want, in Giant Memory. So essentially, Ben Hart makes it all the way to the Throne of Want, uh, which would mean that unless he farmed a million souls to open the Shrine of Winter, that he would have had to pass through here as well, despite the fact that we don't see him. Have you heard of the shrine on the eastern edge of Drang Lake? Built to honor the dragons, they say. If only I knew how to get there. I'd, I'd go and I'd came it for good as. Hinting to the player that later on when you get a petrified dragon egg that you should bring it back to him, at which point he becomes a covenant leader. I mean it. Okay, so that's all he has for us for now. He is, of course, the merchant uh, with which you can spice your spells down to lower the requirements. He also carries 
some sorceries. The Eastern Land of Mira is not only the home of proud knights, there is also a traditional order of shadow knights who use any means necessary to carry out their orders. So dis uh, distinct from the likes of Lucatil or Azatil, who uh, in the players' interactions with them don't use magic at all. Hexing is rooted in both sorcery and miracles, but it is viewed as a perilous affront to all life and banned in most lands. Uh, this one was modified by an old sorcery by Gilia the Hexer. And, oops, we also have Darkstorm. An esoteric spell created by Navland, the infamous exiled sorcerer, creates a local vortex of dark flame. The heretic Navland was executed along with his entire village, and the mere utterance of his name became a crime. Some say it was because he sought to restore the banned art of resurrection. So that's some, some lore we've already gotten. Human Effigy we've already read, Green Blossom, Black Firebomb, we've already read Rust Coin. Ah, carvings! We're going to need to return and purchase these. Faces carved from the wood of aged trees. They speak when thrown upon the ground. The fine craftsmanship of these faces is evident even after much aging, but no one knows even the name of the artist. This face says, hello! Doesn't it look friendly? <laughs> so, uh... The craftsman that they're referring to is Hawkeye Goth from Dark Souls 1. And in terms of rings, we have another ring connected to Velka and the Jester set. So nothing particular to Jester Thomas in that set. The territory of Ferosa became lawless after the kingdom fell to war. Citizens became bandits and scattered to other lands. So similar for the rest of the set. Very well. We pressure. So we'll have to return to him later to get the carvings, uh, because I've already consumed all the souls that I had on my person. So we're gonna aggro these guys one at a time. Starting with this feller. I respect my character in between the episodes as well to uh, get some more dexterity uh, because the secondary weapon I'm going to be using is a rapier. But as a result, I lost 10 damage in scaling, which isn't a lot, on uh, my longsword, which is brought. So otherwise, I probably would have killed that guy in two hits. Two two handed R2 still does the job, though. A long knight helm. The bonds of the Elan Knights, who served the Old Iron King, were mightier than the land's iron. But in the end, the Knights were subsumed by the flames that brought the castle down. And of course, we're going to be speaking about them in much greater detail later on uh, when we do the DLC. So we won't be doing all of the bosses. It's li unlikely that we'll be doing all of the bosses in this run. Uh... But certainly, uh, I will be doing the DLC, the main bosses. Probably not going to do the challenge areas, uh, notwithstanding the fight with Sir Alon. Um, this part is, of course, a little bit tricky. Wow, that guy. Really eager to get over here. If I had some poison arrows, I would take out the archer and the guy in front of the, uh, the captain in front of the fog gate, but alas, I do not. Should really go visit Na uh, Gavline sooner than later. Especially before we head to the Iron Keep. Or, sorry, the, the Shrine of Amana, not the Iron Keep. Just dealing with that place without... Where are you going? Dealing with that place without uh, poison arrows is a giant pain in the rear. So it's an item here. Soul of a Proud Knight and a Repair Powder. I'm very grateful to that Proud Knight for not using that last Repair Powder before they died. Because I believe I only have two of them. Yeah, I had two. I have three now. 
See if we can knock this guy off. We're supposed to knock off the other way. There you go. Okay. I was thinking he wasn't going to fall into the lava there. What do we have here? Life ring plus one and twinkling titanite. So we'll replace the life ring, the base level life ring that we have on. Uh, we also haven't looked at the ring of steel protection. Where gains the protection of steel increases physical defense. Said to be the ring of the once legendary knight king, though his tales are long forgotten and even the greatly wizened have no recollection of his exploits. Uh, I believe that's referring to a character from Dark Souls 1, but I can't remember. Um, likely because I I don't believe I've, uh, I've ever used the Ring of Steel Protection. I don't find it to be particularly useful in either game. So we're going to try and avoid the great arrows of these two remaining. And as soon as I say that, I get hit by two great arrows. The two remaining Alon Knight Captains there. Use the door eye frames. Ouch. So large Titanic Shard and Petrified Dragon Bone. Let me close this door before... No! Leave me alone, please! Thank you. <laughs> it's a good thing I can't open doors. Because there is a, a, a few ores I haven't talked about. Uh, so nothing special there. Petrified Dragon Bone. Commonly called Dragon Bone, but the veracity of the name is questionable. In any case, this petrified bone houses great power. Okay. Not much in the way of lore there. Thought it might uh, might have had something relating to Aldia and his experiments on giants and dragons. There's Lucatil's summon sign. Despite my better judgment, uh, thank you for that message right in front of the iron chest, whoever that was. I tend not to summon Lucatil, got his Y hander there. I tend not to summon Lucatil for this boss fight because she can often get trapped outside the fog gate, but in the interest of completing her storyline, um, we are going to summon her anyway. So we just picked up the dull ember. Goodbye. These guys have some of the coolest armor in the game. It's a shame that you can't uh, can't get their their katana though. Okay, look at Teal. Oh, we also have Guerrero Fatal One. Lots of Sunbros and Oak Forty Four. Sunbros or Sunbras, depending on the gender of the players. Well, let's uh, go take care of the Smelter Demon, shall we? Are we coming? Yep. Wow, it's a quick buff. In the DLC, of course, the blue smelter uh, has an AoE attack sometimes when, when it buffs. Possible AoE coming. No AoE. Ouch, that tracking. Okay, Lucatil for taking his aggro. Leaping attack on Ouch, that really. She usually blocks, but. Got another buff coming. Get out of the way of the AoE, Lucatil. Okay. Another AoE incoming. That one's definitely an AoE. In case you're unaware, AOE stands for Area of Effect Attack. No AOE. So it's generally 
a good idea to get out of the way when its sword is in the ground like that because it could indicate that another AoE is coming. Possible AoE. Oh! Thought my repair powder was an Estus there. Just negating the one we picked up, but that's alright. Let's finish him off, Lucatiel, what do you say? Well done. Alright. This chest has torches or flame butterfly? I can't remember. Something I don't generally grab. Flame butterfly, five of them. And I'm the ugliest shield in the game. The pig head looks eerily authentic, but is an imitation. Though the shield's defensive capacity is ordinary, it may spook an unsuspecting foe. Okay. Um, we're going to discard that so I don't have to look at it again. We are going to switch briefly to a small shield, uh, for reasons that will become obvious very shortly. Zweihander. As the name suggests, the Zweihander is held with two hands, but its weight is such that even wielding it in this manner requires strength worthy of the blade. Uh, don't think that's hinting at the giant dad, but... And as I mentioned, I'm, I'm starting to work on secondary weapon for this build, uh, which would be a rapier. Um, Smelter Demon Soul. And Flame Butterfly. Bottle filled with dried red butterflies. Simula stimulation of these rare butterflies creates a small flame, allowing torches to be lit on the go. These butterflies exude secretions, which ignite upon exposure to air, protecting them from natural predators. Known and loved as handy firelighters, but feared as, as the catalysts of disastrous fires when found in swarms. Soul of the Smelter Demon that haunts the castle that's sunk into a pool of iron. The old Iron King's life was taken by a mass of iron that had been given a soul. Was this metal Goliath there from the beginning, or was it a product of the king's conceit? Not entirely sure what to make of that. Uh, we just got a rating on our one message that we left a few episodes ago, the 3 a.m. episode. Uh, skeleton ahead. Someone appreciates that, uh, that uh, very helpful and informative message. <laughs> so we're going to rest here real quick. And then we're going to go say hello to an old friend. And try to stay away from the fog gate so as not to aggro that uh, Alon Knight captain that's there. might take a while. Especially if I continue to fail pairing. I'm not going to bother switching to two hands. Much too late with my parry there. Much too late once again. Much too early that time. Can't pray that attack. That attack. There was my buff. Much, much too late with that one.
too early with that parry. Alright, sorry that that took much, much longer than I thought it was going to. We have acquired the Ring of Blades plus one, so we get a little bit of, a little bit extra, only 15 points uh, of attack damage in addition to what we already had, but that's... Every little bit counts and that makes up for the amount that we lost uh, when I respect to increase my dexterity, decrease my strength. So we're going to continue on. We're not going to be dealing with Belfry Saul until we deal with Belfry Luna. So for the time being, we're going to continue on to the old Iron King. That item down there... is, I believe, a herb of some sort. Not really using spells on this build, so really no need for it. Ooh. That was close. Hey, feller. Oh. That was an all-in-one there. Get some iframes, please. Thank you. Sorry. 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 So soul of the name of soldier and monastery charm. Not sure why I'm wasting a life gem when I still have nine S's left, but Sorry for over-relying on the roll backstabs, but as I mentioned, uh, not good at all at parrying those people. I would very much like to learn from someone who is good at parrying the Elon Knights, figure out what it is exactly that I'm doing wrong, other than perhaps getting old and not really having great reflexes anymore. But as I've mentioned, this is not a challenge run of any sort. It's just a platform to talk about the lore, as well as a sort of... Move back a little bit. Oh, I was so close to getting him. Getting him to guillotine himself. Yeah, it's just a platform for me to talk about the lore of Dark Souls 2, and also to... Uh, a sort of a laboratory, sort of an experiment to see whether or not I should bother uh, doing a blind run of Bloodborne that comes out in something like two weeks. I don't think I've ever in my life been so excited for a game. I was pretty excited for Dark Souls 2, but uh, at that time, I had only played Dark Souls 1. I've still, I've never played Demon Souls, despite the fact that I have watched many a playthroughs of the same. Um, but I feel like, even though Dark Souls 2 was not as great as Dark Souls 1, kind of fell below my expectations, it's still given me countless, countless hours of enjoyment. 
I'm not sure why I sat at the bonfire twice there. I'm also carrying around Sublime Bone Dust, I just realized, or at least I thought I was. Okay, maybe not. Uh, but I will need to burn Sublime Bone Dust after I defeat the Old Iron King. So I realize I haven't talked a lot about the lore in this place just yet, and the reason for that is that... Uh, I thought he'd be dead after that. The reason for that is that uh, a lot of the stuff uh, is better perhaps talked about in the Crown of the Iron King DLC. Um, and also when I return to the Undead Purgatory and uh, Hides Tower Flame to discuss to discuss, uh, yeah, the, the kingdoms of Vulcan and Ven, and where the Iron King and the Iron Kingdom fit into that story as well, and, and the reds and the blues and all that. So, but for the time being, we're going to just fight the Iron King, uh, light the primal bonfire, and return to Majula. said we're going to fight the Iron King, I guess what I should have said is what's left of the Iron King, or the Iron King in his current form. Very reminiscent of the Ceaseless Discharge boss fight from Dark Souls 1. That was a mistake. Thankfully he doesn't punish you all that much. It's a laser beam hand. Some more swipes, thank you. Fist slam. Get a couple shots in on his fist. Or before running back to safety. I've never had that happen before. And I might be dead as a result. Nope. If he had done the laser beam hand, on hand I would have been dead there for sure. There it is. One move too late. Fire slam. Whoa! Range on that. Ah! Getting greedy here. Another fire slam. And there we go. So, again, in contrast to the Duke's Fear Freya boss fight. Uh, the great soul is embraced as soon as we defeat the as soon as we defeat the boss. We don't have to pick it up off the floor or anything. Um, and so, as you know, if you've played the DLC, the DLC seems to take place in the Iron Kingdom as well, except that the kingdom hasn't or isn't sunk into iron. So. And I'll talk to this, talk to this point more when I get to the DLC. But some of the the surrounding landscape does look familiar, spire type formations, to what we see in the DLC, um, which leads to the question, and it's not um, it's not an unreasonable question at all, given that the Dark Souls One DLC uh, involved us traveling back in time. But it's not entirely clear whether we travel back in time when. Um, 
entering the DLC. So is this a portal that travels us, that, that transports us in space, in time, or in both? I'm inclined to believe that it's both, but it could just be space, it could just be time as well. But we're at just over 30 minutes right now in my uh, recording timer here. Uh, so we're going to call it a call it an episode here. Uh, in the next episode, we are going to start our journey towards the fourth Lord Soul um, and uh, descend into the pit in Majula. So I hope you will join me then, and uh, I hope you continue to enjoy the playthrough. Leave any comments in with any feedback, constructive uh, criticism, anything of the sort in the comment section below. I look forward to hearing from you and seeing you next time. And uh, yeah, take care.